Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video where we are going to talk about props and not the kind of props we know from like JavaScript properties, um, but props as in React state management. Um, but props still stands for properties. And it's a great way to share data and functions between components in React. Um, in this video, we will also learn about lifting state up and about the uh, concept of prop drilling. So let's say we want to create an application uh, with two components besides the app component. So an in input component and another component that will multiply the number that is entered in the input component by two. So I could actually start with um, creating this app, however, not splitting it and two components yet. So I will have an input value and set input value because we're going to use the use state hook and it will start with um, zero. And let's see, in the return statement, I'll give it a header um, and I will say, uh, multiplied by two app, like the most useless app in the world. And um, we'll have an input field right here that only accepts numbers. And right there, we want to have an on change event. We pass in an arrow function and we'll set the input value to the and I forget to pass the event in here to the event the target dot value. And then right here, I could say multiplied number is the input value multiplied by two. So now when I save it and go to my app right here, as soon as I start entering data, you will see we get, um, the multiplied number right here. So let's actually split this in two components. So our input component is right here and our multiplied by two component is this one. So I can create a new folder called components and let's start with um, the multiplied by two component. So I will put that in here and I can just copy that line of code right there. But now when I save it, you will see, first of all, our uh, multiply by two um, line is gone, but it also gives an error right here. It will say input value is not defined. And that's true, right? Because we do not have any state in this component. Now what we can do is actually render that multiplied by two component right here. And now when I save it, it will give us that same error because the input value is still not defined. But I can pass the input value as a prop to the multiplied by two component. So I could say input value is equal to the input value. And now when I head back to the multiplied by two component, I can take in props as an argument. Now let's first console log props, see what's, what's in there. And I would just comment out this line for now. So we get rid of the error. And now when I open up my console, you'll see we get an object with the input value of zero, which is our default value. So that's great because now we can actually use this input value in our multiplied by two component. And we can even do it in a cleaner way by immediately destructuring that input value right here. So we could say input value. And now when we console lock the input value, you will see it will console lock the input value directly. So now I can uncomment this code right here. I'll just remove this. 
There we go. And now when I save it, our app will work properly fine. So now we can do the exact same for the um, for the input component, right? So I will grab that line and I will create a new component right here. I will call it input.jsx input and now oops I forgot to copy it let's go back right here okay now I can put it in like so but now we get the same problem because now if I want to render the input component we get the exact same problem because the set input value as you can see right here is not defined but we can also pass functions to it right because this is simply a set state action so i can do the same by just passing that set state value as a prop destructuring it in the input component and now when i save it it will work so what we've did right now is we lifted the state up to the app component so it can be used by both the input and multiplied by two component. So imagine that I put this line of code in our multiplied by two component, we could not have used it in our input component. So that's why we put the state right here in our app component. And when building applications with React, you will sometimes find yourself defining, for example, some state right here. And then, you know, you add a new component and you find out that the same state needs to be used right here. And often the best way to do it is simply lifting the state up to the closest ancestor, right? So right here we have a, um, a little more complex component hierarchy, but let's say this chart cell and left nav need to share the same um the same state then we have to find the closest ancestor which in this case will be the main page because that is the closest ancestor to both of these components so that brings us to prop drilling and prop drilling is something you will hear a lot in the React community, and a lot of people don't like it, including myself. And because let's say we have the following app where we have still the input component, but now we have a couple of other components. We have the calculation overview that then renders the multiplied calculations. And then this component will render both the multiplied by two and the multiplied by three component. So we still, we have to lift that state up to our app component, but then we have to drill it all the way down to the component that actually needs it, which is in this case, the multiplied by two component. So let's actually create this. So I could add some new components and I will say calculation to calculation overview that j is x and we have the multiplied calculations and we of course already have our multiplied by two component so what then would happen is instead of immediately rendering multiplied by two, we would have our app component rendering calculation overview, but also here we need to pass that prop. And then I go right here and we destructure the input value. Then here we will render the um, multiplied calculations. 
also with that property of input value. And then this component eventually will also destructure the input value. And then finally render the multiplied by two component. So if I go back now, refresh, you will see it will still work. But what we've done right now, we had to kind of like drill the input value three levels deep in order to get it where we wanted to use it. And that's something a lot of React developers don't like and a problem we in this case could solve with component composition, which I will be talking about in the next video.